we met for the first time in Valakilda, Denmark. And we were both students and teachers, the way I saw it, because all the musicians were great. And we kind of had this immediate, you know, communication musically, just to play songs late at night, you know, everybody open to making music. And I think probably during this week we yeah. became friends. Well, actually we met being picked up from the airport. I remember you had a huge suitcase. Oh, <laughs> still. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, then we just played every day. We saw each other in different situations. Well, Jazz Baltica, two years ago, what was it? It was an invitation from from them, Rainer Harman, you know, asked if I had something that I thought would be special. And so we talked about you, and he mentioned, you know, yeah, we'd done these trio projects, obviously, with Mark Johnson, and but you know, I thought, wow, it'd be cool to play duo, you know. Not that we had done that before, but it'd be another tributary, you know. Yeah. And it kind of started there. It's yeah. just like, I thought. It was a good decision. <laughs> so in a way, a completely different music developed. Right. Yeah. And then, then we started writing specifically and thinking specifically for the duo. Yeah. It's always just to have one other person. I, it seems like in my experience, musically growing up, I played in a lot of duo situations. Unconsciously, it's just what what the situation was. Yeah. So it feels so you know just natural and the space of it. I was surprised to hear that you played a lot of duo in church. Yeah. I didn't it's, know that that was duo. Um, the organist that I played with, they were such, uh, you know, forces. Most times they were the choir director as well. So they'd lead the songs, direct the choir, and play the organ. So I'm just sitting behind her, sort of watching, you know, and <laughs> everyone's singing. And, yeah. But, you know, it, it's not until really just recently that I've thought about you know, those beginnings. At what age did you start doing that? I guess I was about 13. My brother, Brady, was playing before me. And then he went to college. Oh. And then I had, you know, I was playing violin, you know, and tennis. And, you know, I wasn't really thinking so much about drumming until it was kind of my duty to, <laughs> you know, move into the Take scene. over. In a way. So it's bizarre. It's great. Yeah, well. <laughs> Family tradition. Yeah, well, yeah, you, you know, you know about that too. <laughs> when I first left Shreveport to go to New Orleans, it was, you know, I was a big one. Be like, okay, I'm on my own in a way for the first time. And the Friendly Travelers were, they were a group in New Orleans that played at coffee houses around town. It was always free. And, man, they always lit up places, you know, just with a, uh, you know, with their vibe and, you know, sang, you know, gospel music, but it was everybody, you know, in free coffee shop environment it was invited, so it was great. It was like church in a cafe, yeah. you know? <laughs> It also says something about our work. Right. Our work could be considered a kind of a traveling in the songs. Yeah. We travel to different places. That's true. And uh, most of the time we're friendly. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one of the things that I enjoyed most on this tour is that even though some of the tunes are kind of defined with you know, certain parts that we have to play that are, that are essential, yeah. that we still 
manage to light it differently every night. Yeah. I don't have to think, what should I do? Right. You know, it's like, it kind of comes. Yeah. And if I don't know, then I just listen. Right. And that's beautiful. I mean, that's, for me, that makes it very easy, this, the playing in the duo. Yeah. Know? Well, it, you know, even though it seems like there's a great responsibility, that, oh, it's just the two of us. And either we have something to say or not. And I feel that too. Like we can totally let let that the absence becomes a great part of the music. Yeah. You know? For me, it's uh, extremely attractive to be able to play the bass when I want to. I mean, it's great. Totally. I mean, if I feel like it, I can play bass. <laughs> yeah. And I love it anyway, to, to this role of in, the, in music. I always, I always loved it. Yeah. Once you said to me, I don't have to play the bass all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was a really good hint because in the beginning, you know, I thought I have to do that too now. Sure. You know, in yeah. addition. Yeah. But that's not how it works. I mean, maybe it's also like what you let go of that, you know, hopefully frees you, you know, like, because when you play by yourself, I mean, it's not many people who really improvise with loops and, I mean, you know, things you developed as a solo yeah. art. I mean, it's, you know, it's rare because it still has an improvisatory center, you know, it's never just, uh, you know, stacking. It's yeah. always composing. So when we do it together, it still makes the music like that trip, you know. Now that the music also developed to a certain degree from the record, it was interesting to hear the record yesterday again in the yeah, restaurant. It was. <laughs> because it just reminded me, aha, that's where we started. Mm -hmm. And even though I like the record, it just feels very different now, the music. Yeah. But it's going to be interesting where it goes. <laughs> I feel that on some of these intros and free situations in, the, in, in our concerts, yeah. that we open some windows, maybe. Yeah. So, in a way, I could imagine that we, that we get together in a studio that feels nice for a few days and we just play. We don't even have a tune, yeah. you know? <laughs> Nothing prepared, yeah. That could I be mean, nice. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the record essentially is that, you yeah. know, kind of surprises. Even, even the entirety of an improvisation that, you know, maybe we just thought, okay, the first two minutes feels like the piece and then at that pause when we started again, that's maybe not so good, but then three weeks later, you know, you hear you hear it again. It's like, oh man, this there's actually something there as well. It's an, it, it's actually just another song. Yeah. Or maybe that could be the next trip, just yeah. just to play free and see what comes. Yeah. As much as there's this mutual respect for like interpreting a song or a piece, you know. I mean, you especially come from that tradition, of, you know, classically. Yeah. You know, you, you, you play the piece and you inject it with you know, emotion. And I, and I admire that too. That is kind of specific because we have this real um, center of the music, which is the song. Yeah. And when we play the song, we really play it. We don't quote it. We really play the right. song. And at the same time, there's a lot of improvisation. Um, kind of, for me, it's a perfect combination. Yeah. And the improvisation never gets abstract. Right. Unless the cell phone rings in the audience. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Composing. Then we make a little <laughs> abstraction. <laughs> but basically, That's all I want to do, play songs that I like and improvise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. <laughs>
I was playing both classical music and jazz until I was 22. And I had to decide one or the other because I couldn't dedicate myself fully to both. And then it was more a question of time because I would have liked to continue playing classical music. Some, some of the pieces are really nice. But anyway, the decision was, was good for me and I feel that I can influence a lot more aspects of the music now than if I was a classical guitarist. You know? right. I would still be practicing Bach lute suites and trying to play it as well as possible. But that's that compared to writing music and meeting a lot of other musicians and improvising all the time. And yeah, that's just more attractive. Yeah. But there is a, a certain body of music that you can play on the classical guitar, which is really great. I mean, that those lute suites are so great. You know, they are really the most intelligent music you can play on that instrument, mm. I think. have to motivate myself because this is such a great attractive place I just want to go there basically and also there was never a question in my life to do to do something different it was kind of clear I, I don't know what what other work I, I could do yeah I mean, it kind of, yeah, somewhat like calling, you know, like you have to follow that, that voice in your heart and that tells you. But for me, I, early on, I wasn't so sure, you know, music was just always a part of my life, you know, through my family. Mm -hmm. My father actually, he used to have a radio show like on a little AM station in, in Shreveport. And my mother, even after she retired from kindergarten teaching, went and was also a DJ for oh, some time. Oh, really? Scoff radio station. So, you know, there's cool. always like, there's always these records around, you know, Al Green and the Hawkins family and James Cleveland. And, you know, I was unknowingly, you know, being prepared for, you know, this time, you know, and playing in church, although unconscious and, you know, never thinking that, oh, I'm going to be a drummer, you know. All of a sudden, you know, a, a decade has gone by, and you know, many records have come out of it, and mm -hmm. time and heroes that I listened to growing up uh, that, you know, I never would think, oh, I want to play with these people. It was just like, these are the music makers. All of a sudden, you're, you know, you're, you're making music with the music makers. <laughs> Sort of when I deal with music, then I kind of know the game. I would never betray it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it won't sound good, and I'm looking for that True. space. Yeah. In other parts of life, which basically is the same than music, it's all the same. Yeah. I, sometimes I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get what the game is. <laughs> yeah. In that way, music teaches me, for example, to let go. If you can't let go yeah. in certain musical situations, yeah. let go of an idea. Once it's once the life of the idea is gone, yeah. let it go. Let it go. Yeah. If you don't, it will sound horrible. Yeah. 
It's know? always a challenge. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, well, not so much on stage. You know, like when we play, it's like you're uninsulated. You know, you're just you're very open to maybe more so than any other part of you know actual life. Mm -hmm. You know, like off stage. You know, like wow. My favorite moment of the record mm. is one drum hit of yours. Really? Right before the solo of Gnadenwald. It's like... We're in the house. Play! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's great. For a while, you know, it changes from... Valakil was my favorite for a long time. Yeah. Maybe, you know, Smith still, in a way, it, you know, in a way, that song, maybe because of, you know, my gravity towards ballads or, mm -hmm. or that kind of heaviness, it's almost, it possesses a certain power mm -hmm. that, you know, and it's all in the 